All right, so I think we're live. Um, so we're going to wait a second before we kind of get too deep into what we're going to be going over today. But um, this is going to be a stream, and it's also going to be recorded, and this will be uh, going on my uh, YouTube channel um, you know, later on. So uh, what we're going to be doing today is I have a guest with me. So Harry is someone I used to work with at AWS, and we're going to be talking about CDK, but we're also going to be using a really interesting library that he built. So before I kind of go too much into to your, your own stuff, just you can go ahead and give me an intro and tell everyone who you are. Sounds good. Uh, I'm Harry and big fan of the CDK and AWS generally. I uh, worked with Nader on Amplify for about two years, recently joined Alexa and yeah, created this tool that abstracts away a little bit of the bloat from CDK constructs. And I say bloat lovingly, uh, CDK was built with many languages in mind. So they have the design of the construct in TypeScript, uh, the way that you define your building blocks of the CDK application. Um, the structure of it is catering to many languages. So um, they've kind of had to make some compromises for the time being, as far as the language specific experiences go. And what I wanted to do is create a tool that was going to really focus on TypeScript. And so we're, we're gonna take a look at that. We're also gonna build uh, some, some APIs today. So starting with a REST API and then GraphQL API, like Nader said. Um, and it should be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I would say one of the one of the things that I'm really excited about within the AWS ecosystem, other than Amplify, is CDK. It's one of the things that I've uh, learned uh, a lot more of over the last six months or so, doing a lot more CDK in my day to day, you know, tutorials and and working with customers and stuff like that. I think it's a nice complement to people that are using Amplify. So if you want to kind of um, deep dive and understand what Amplify supports. Um, I would recommend, you know, using Amplify if it supports kind of what you're looking to build. But um, a lot of customers are um, bumping into the edges of what Amplify supports. And I think an, um, a very natural progression when you're kind of extending what your AWS stack is going to be consisting of is to check out other infrastructures, code providers, just to kind of understand how everything works. To me, CDK is like the coolest one and the most interesting one with kind of the fastest growing you know, user-based ecosystem. It's also very consumable for someone like me, who's a front-end developer that kind of understands how to write JavaScript and TypeScript already. The API is pretty um, straightforward. The documentation to me could use a little work um, as, as someone that wasn't familiar with AWS, but kind of once you start getting to know it, it's, it's pretty simple to go into the docs and understand how to put stuff together. But I think that, um, you know, it's it's one of the most exciting projects at AWS. So, um, but before I go to we go too much further into actual concise constructs, maybe people haven't used CDK. Can you kind of give a really brief overview of what CDK is? Yeah. So the CDK actually isn't AWS specific. Um, in fact, Terraform is now using the CDK as well. What it is is this open source tool chain for abstracting over infrastructure. Um, and it can be applied to other domains, but it covers for now the entire surface area of AWS. So um, the experience that you have with like serverless SAM or with CloudFormation or with just clicking around in the console, um, instead of those approaches, you can script your infrastructure by defining these uh, type safe constructs, a uh, really cool pattern that we'll, we'll dive into shortly. Um, I also want to note, uh, for those of you who are CDK beginners, we are going to first show the, the raw CDK uh, versions of these APIs that we're building, and then we're going to refactor them with the concise constructs library. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started, I guess. Do you want to go ahead and start uh, showing us you know, some code, I guess? Yeah, for sure. Let's see, share screen. Oh, I have to, I have to open system preferences. I hope this doesn't make me restart. If so, will I be able to rejoin? Yeah, you, you you'll be fine. You can rejoin. Okay, I'll be right back. Sure. Yeah. So, anyone jumping in right now, Harry stepped away to um, get permissions to share a screen because he's going to start 
showing us some code in just a second. All right. All right. You're All back. Right. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you need any permissions or anything like that on my end. I think you should be good to go, but I'm not 100% certain. Let's see. Are you able to see my screen? Mm, now I can. Uh oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So, first we'll go ahead and get a new project started. So, we'll change directories for now into desktop. Um, I and think your video. Oh, okay, never mind. I see what you're doing now. Okay. Um, and also, uh, I lost your face, but uh, I'm not sure if you meant to do that or not. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Or, oh, all right. Now let's let's go ahead and create a new project from scratch. So let's make a directory. Screencasting. We'll go into that. Now let's go ahead and make a package. JSON. And we'll go ahead and open it up. Let's make this larger. That Maybe not good. that large. Also, while we're at it, we might as well go ahead and uh, initialize Git. So we can share this after the screencast. And that should do it. Go ahead and add all this good stuff. Do a first commit. And go ahead and get it up there, even though for now we just have this empty package JSON. So we're good. Okay. Now, next thing inside of our package JSON, uh, go ahead and, of course, give it a name, so screencasting. And we'll start to fill out dependencies. And so what, what are we gonna need for this project? I guess the first things we should install are probably the CDK dependencies. So we'll go ahead and install that. Um, AWS, oops. CDK slash core, then AWS CDK, which is just the CLI, and then go ahead and install AWS CDK slash AWS Lambda, as well as AWS CDK slash AWS API gateway. Um, and yeah, as far as dependencies go, I think that's, that's good for I love this part of setting up a CDK project. I feel like I'm in a, in a toy store. I'm just like picking out different services I want to use, just install them and that's it, you're ready to roll. Completely, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, let's, uh, let's also install some dev dependencies. This is also a, a, a toy store kind of a moment, especially when we go ahead and add oh, TypeScript, my favorite toy. <laughs> um, uh, so cool. someone asked if this is gonna be available on YouTube yet or later, yes, it will be. We will putting this up on YouTube. Uh, actually, we'll go on there immediately afterwards. Sweet. We're also going to install TS Node. This is a great package that lets us execute a TypeScript file without having to first compile it into JavaScript. So it's just kind of a productivity tool. I definitely encourage you all to check this out. Nice tip. Um, and then we're going to install types, of course. Uh, so we want node types and try to think if there's anything else. Yeah, we could install type slash AWS Lambda so that when we're actually defining our uh, our handlers, we, we get a little bit of added safety. And with that, I think we will have kind of everything we need for now, uh, maybe with the exception of ES build, which we're going to use to actually compile 
uh, our handlers and bundle them. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and configure TypeScript. So our tsconfig.json. Now, I always like to steal from I have this template that, whoops, it's too big. This template that I use. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and copy all this good stuff. Um, someone asked what this is about. So basically we are um, gonna be talking about CDK, which is a way to build cloud infrastructure as code. And Harry is first gonna demo how to build an app using raw, raw CDK. And then we're gonna look at a new library that he's actually built called Concise Constructs that allows you to build out CDK apps more concisely as the name, um, you know, sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, here we go. So uh, also if, um, it, please, please uh, stop me whenever there are questions so that I, I can, I can you know, if there's anything that you need me to answer. Cool. Don't hesitate. Well, so declaration, we won't need for this. Um, let's see some, some other things. As far as target goes, uh, in the Lambda environment, uh, ES2020 won't work. So we gotta make sure that we have it at ES2018. Also, you know, it might be good practice to have a source folder, but we're, we're just gonna go ahead and include everything. So all TypeScript files um, and JSON. And then I guess that should be pretty good for our TypeScript configuration. <clears throat> okay. Uh, next, and I I think this is a, let, let me know if this isn't the most critical part of <laughs> this, but uh, I, I like to go a little bit into kind of the workspace configuration too, if it's uh, helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and configure our VS Code settings. Uh, within here, GraphQL, and you know, if we want some nice formatting, you can go ahead and say editor.default formatter. And if you have prettier installed, go ahead and we'll, we'll use that. Editor.format on save. We do want format on save. Um, fine, that's a really nice productivity boost. And then we're gonna want this for a few things. One is for JSON, one's for JSON C, and then what else do we want? We want TypeScript, of course. We want um, YAML. We are going to be defining some YAML just for some of the GraphQL code gen stuff. Um, so within here, we're gonna have, whoops, all that good stuff. And I'll say maybe zoom in just a tiny bit. Gotcha. That's good. How's that? Cool. And now you should all, uh, actually, we uh, should probably do editor.format on save, just kind of for, for all languages. Curious why this is highlighting. Expected comma. That would make sense. And now at this point, we should be good. Yep, you see, uh, I'm gonna come out here and then I press Command S, it's, uh, we're all set. Sweet, so now we have our workspace configured. Um, let's go ahead and, and set up kind of one of our APIs that we're gonna be working with. So let's start with a REST API. What does a REST a API new... usually consist of on AWS? Uh, usually it would consist of API gateway proxying to a Lambda function and then you executing whatever code you want on there. You could even have a GraphQL endpoint running from that API. Uh, although we're going to be using AppSync further on when we define our GraphQL API. Yeah. So first thing we'll make is uh, our REST API folder and an index within that folder. Um, we're gonna go ahead and import API gateway from WS CDK slash API gateway. We're gonna do the same thing for Lambda. 
And we're going to do the same thing for uh, CDK's core library. So we have kind of our three um, CDK dependencies here. And normally in a CDK application, what you would do is you would define a stack. A stack would consist of all of these resources that are going to work together. So like our Lambda function and our REST API or our API gateway. Um, so let's do that. We'll go ahead and export this as well. So export class REST API stack is going to extend cdk.stack. And within here, we're going to define this constructor, which is going to accept a scope, which is of type cdk.app, and an ID, which is of type string. Then we're going to pass both of those into super. So this is some of the, uh, the boilerplate that we'll be abstracting away. Um, and we'll, we'll get to this a little bit later. But for now, let's just get our API working. I guess the, the first thing that we should do is probably define uh, the actual code that's, uh, that we want to execute on this endpoint. So we'll go ahead and create a directory Lambda that has an index within it. Um, within this index, you know, something that I like to do is actually have um, the handler logic be inside of another file. I'm going to keep it really simple. We'll have a hello world.ts. And from here, we'll import from AWS Lambda. And you see here we have, in a type safe way, all of the events um, and, then, and kind of all, all, all the handler types um, that we could be proxying to. Mm -hmm. This is really useful if you're integrating with other services that send specific. Uh, types of events to your Lambda. But for now, we can keep it just a generic handler. And we'll go and export const handler. Whoops. Handler equals is going to be asynchronous, even though I don't think we're going to be using async, or even though I don't think we're going to be using a wait anywhere within here. And for now, we'll just go ahead and return body of hello world. And maybe we'll write out the path. So the current path is, and then within here, we can interpolate event.path. So that's going to be the body. For headers, we need to provide what type it is. So this is, uh, content type text slash plane. And for status code, we'll just give it a 200. So there we go. Um, we, we've gone ahead and created our handler. Now we're also going to have to define a step that's going to that's going to transpile this. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, for now, let's just assume that um, the code, which we're, we're going to export, actually, so we're exporting handler as hello world handler from here. So we're, we're going to assume that there's this, um, that what we're going to be building is a Lambda dist folder. And that will contain uh, our index, which will be the bundled code that we just wrote inside of Lambda. Got it. But we'll get rid of that for now. And um, one thing I want to call out here is that like if you're get, just getting started with um, with CDK, there is a way to initialize a, like a boilerplate project using the CDK CLI. I think what we're going through here is, is really um, informative though. Like if you want to kind of know how to build it from scratch, but if, if you want to just get up and running as well, you can also run CDK init and kind of have a boilerplate project uh, created for you. But you're not going to have all of the configurations that he just went through, I don't believe. Yes, yeah, some of this is more specific to the project that we're working on. Um, but it, It'll, I'll, I'll, I'll try to um, describe kind of what's happening because I, I do think the boilerplate has some, or, or, or the templates rather have some things that actually obfuscate. Like they have a bin directory and they have this, like uh, this app.json or, mm -hmm. you know, the, there's a, there, there are ways to kind of condense it. Um, yeah, we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, 
but yeah, the, the templates are, are pretty good, especially if you're trying to create a library for other CDK projects, um, you know, which can be published to not just MPN, but also registries for other languages so that CDK developers using like Python or Java are able to interact with your construct, which you wrote in TypeScript. Yeah, really awesome. Cool. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and, and script our infrastructure. So we're gonna define our handler, which is going to be a new Lambda function. Here we pass in this as the scope, and then we give it an ID. Uh, and we can just call this handler. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Within here, we wanna provide some code. So for this, first let's import path just from the node library. And here we'll say, we want code to be a new lambda dot asset code. And then here we have to pass a path. So it's going to be path dot resolve, and it's going to be the current directory, and then lambda dist, because that's where we're going to build to. We want to build, uh, yep. Next thing we're going to do is specify the handler. So within here, you see the index is exporting that handler as hello world handler. So we want uh, to specify, okay, it's the index file and exported from there, the hello world handler. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that you can see is we're getting these nice type errors. And if we hover over it, it'll tell us exactly what's missing. This is one of the beautiful things about the CDK. Um, it's very safe. So if you're misusing the piece of infrastructure, it'll go ahead and give you an error at compile time before you even deploy it, or at least that's, that's the goal in the long term. So for runtime, we're going to specify the runtime as lambda.runtime.node12. And bam, that's how we define our function. And you see handler has a type of lambda.function. And other constructs accept this type. So let's create our API. So new API gateway dot lambda rest API. This is going to, just as the lambda function did, this so will accept this as the scope. We give it an ID, so rest API. And then for properties, we'll just give it handler. So we go ahead and pass this handler that we defined here directly in. And that sums it up. That's all that we need to do to define our backend. So we pretty much, or you pretty much created the function as well as the API within like maybe, you know, six lines of code or so. What are the configurations that Lambda and API gateway, or I guess what are the configurations for that API gateway endpoint when you just set it up as is? Does it automatically set up the Lambda proxy? Yes, it does, uh, okay. along with, uh, any kind of cores options that you need. Um, it, it does quite a bit under the hood. So Lambda REST API is uh, a higher level abstraction over the infrastructure. So we're able to define this with a single line of code, but actually there's quite a bit happening under the hood. Um, the beauty of the CDK is as we get these higher level constructs, um, you know, we, we don't need to know everything that's happening under the hood. It's the same thing with Amplify. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, Lambda, so like this is a super common use case. So they were like, okay, let's just build a, a construct that kind of does all of this because people keep building this from scratch anyway. So we'll just like, you know, box it up and, and ship it. And that makes sense. Totally. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, uh-oh, uh -oh, I'm going to decline that. Um, next thing that we're going to do is go to, um, go to kind of our root and we're going to create an index. So we, we want an entry point for our app. Our app is going to contain the two APIs. Um, they're going to live you know, independent from one another, but they are going to be part of the same app. So let's go ahead and import stars CDK from AWS CDK slash core. And let's define um, 
or, or let's just say const app equals new CDK dot app. And <clears throat> now we'll go ahead and import the stack that we just defined. Whoops. It's REST API stack. We'll go ahead and instantiate that. And we'll pass in that app. And oh, it also needs an ID. So for ID, let, let's go ahead and create a prefix. Const ID, uh, ID prefix equals screencasting. And go ahead and give this here. Screencasting REST API. Great. And just like that, um, I think we're ready to start to, to actually build our handler code. Um, so next let's go ahead and import. Oh, I keep doing that. Yes, build. Let's import build sync. Now this is very important. CDK processes need to be synchronous. Um, so what we're trying to do right here is the code contained within Lambda, we wanna go ahead and bundle it up. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. We're also going to want to import path. And then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and say build sync bundle is true. For entry points, we're going to want to provide just a single entry point, which is going to be path.resolve current directory. Right now we're at the root directory. So we're going to resolve REST API. And then within REST API, we want to resolve Lambda. And the entry point within Lambda is index. So there we go. This is the, the entry file for the Lambda that we're going to resolve. Um, for format, we're going to do common JS. For out file, we're going to go ahead and say, OK, this should be built into path.join. And kind of the same stuff as above, except instead of being built into Lambda, we want it to be built into, like we said before, Lambda dist. And it's going to be built into an index.js file, because that it's a JavaScript runtime. It's not uh, TypeScript native. Mm -hmm. Next thing, let's go ahead and set platform to node. Uh, for the sake of easier debugging, I definitely recommend enabling source maps. And for target, let's say no, node 12.2. So now when we go ahead and execute this code, it's going to go ahead and, and build next to this lambda so that what we're referencing here, path.resolve, lambda dist, will actually exist. Um, and in order to execute, this code. We're, we're at the very root of our project. Let's go ahead and say npx cdk deploy. And then we specify app. Now app is going to be how do we want to execute that entry file? So we're going to use ts node, like I said before, and then a period because we're pointing to the index right here. We go ahead and execute this. One thing that you'll notice is it does go ahead and, and generate the slam to dist. And if we nice. look inside of here, we see it's fully built. Now, one thing that's really important is, uh, and you know, we'll we'll just go ahead and hit yes here. So this can deploy while uh, I describe one thing, which is if you have dependencies within your Lambda code, and a very common dependency, of course, is the AWS CDK, or uh, AWS SDK. You don't want to bundle in the entire AWS SDK because the SDK is preloaded in the Lambda environment. So if I'm importing from um, AWS SDK, and, and we will go ahead and install this momentarily, um, and I'm using something from here. Let's just say I'm, I'm, I'm logging out the entire import. 
we, we don't want for all this code to get bundled in uh, when we actually build it. So something that we're going to do when we want to include that code is in this build instruction, we can go ahead and specify uh, external. And this is just an array of strings. So we'll say AWS SDK. And that way, when it comes across that import, it will know not to bring it into the bundle. Hmm, okay, that makes sense. Yep. Let's see. So we're pretty much, we're, we're almost done with our, uh, our deployment. Okay, there we are. And it gives us this endpoint. So let's go ahead and open it. And surely enough, the current path is slash. Um, and if we type in some other stuff, we'll see it pop up there too. So this is pretty great because in your REST API, you can go ahead and dynamically handle any path. Pretty much any request, yeah. Yeah. So from a single endpoint, you have control to build like a, a fully fledged experience. And as a front end developer, this makes all the difference. You don't have to configure a million routes. I mean, you might want to for authenticating certain certain routes, but um, it gives a lot of flexibility. Now, let's let's go ahead and, and get rid of this for now. So the same command that we did before, we're, we're going to do, ex except now we're going to say destroy instead of deploy. So you're going to ask, are you sure? We're going to say yes. And then it'll go through. And destroys are usually a lot faster. So we should see it finish in a moment. So you basically deployed the infrastructure and now you're destroying it. And what and what are we what are we gonna do next? Um, next we're gonna do our our AppSync API. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so this is showcasing the destroy bug. Let, let's actually and we'll, we'll move on immediately after we trigger this, but let, let's deploy it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I know it seems counterintuitive. But I, I just wanted to, to showcase the, the destruction. So next thing that we're going to do is create a, a new folder. Or let, let's see, what, what's the error that it's getting? Oh, it's from here, right? Because we didn't get rid of that. OK. Let's do the same thing as before only a GraphQL API. And this is going to contain an index, which is where we'll define our infrastructure. It's also going to contain the, uh, the Lambda code again. So this is kind of the scaffolding for it. We want a directory with our Lambda code, and we want a directory, or, and we want a file for our AppSync code. So let, let's go ahead and, and start with uh, you know what, Let, let's actually start with the schema. So a GraphQL API has a schema, mm -hmm. so schema.gql. And uh, let, let's adapt to one of your examples, a, a simple note API. So type note, it's gonna have an ID, it's gonna have a name, it's gonna have completed, which is Boolean. Um, next, let's define query. So we want to be able to query a particular note. Or actually, come to think of it, it should be ID. <laughs> um, and then we want, and, and you see how this isn't optional, because the note might not exist. So this is note or null. And then notes. It's always going to be an array of note. Um, and this could be an empty array, uh, but yeah. Does, um, so this confuses me a little bit sometimes when you're, when you're allowing a empty array, <clears throat> but you're also saying it's non-nullable. Can you kind of go into that a little bit? Because I honestly don't even, I don't even know how to write that type. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, let, let's look at what the, the TypeScript equivalent would be. I think that might be helpful. So um, it would be 
you know, if, if we had a note type and we're trying to define this notes field, let's say interface query and notes, it's gonna be, we would probably have it be note like this, right? Um, and then if we wanted to say const query, query equals notes this, this would be a valid definition of the query type. Um, now, if we had this, if, if we had like my note, or rather, if we wanted this to be note or null, um, it could potentially be like my note undefined or, or null there. That would be the equivalent of note or null. So I don't know if I'm explaining this 100% right. Let me. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's, let's don't worry about it. I was just, you know, I always thought that that was an interesting circumstance. It, it is. It, it looks a little bit funky. What we're saying here is this is always going to be a note. This is not allowed to be null. Meanwhile, this is always going to be an array or a list in GraphQL land. It's never going to be null. So you're not allowed to return undefined instead of a list. Got it. That makes a lot more sense now. Because this also cool. has a little bit to do with how DynamoDB works. If you if you run a query, I'm sorry, if you run a scan or a query actually, it, and, and there's nothing there, it just returns an empty array, it doesn't return null. Yep. Um, yeah, it, it definitely looks funky though. I, I think it's a, a matter of GraphQL itself. Like the way that we're used to thinking about it is this would like represent a tuple that has one element inside of it. So kind of moving between the type systems can be a little bit confusing, um, especially since the, the point of GraphQL is the type system is simple enough um, and that, that it solves this one problem really well of cycles. Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't think this is, kind of how how many web developers are used to representing this type but it, it's kind of nifty it's elegant in its own way uh, so next thing we'll create an input for when we want to create a note so input create note input and it's going to take in an id it's going to take in a name and it's going to take in whether it's completed so same thing as before. You see these, these types are actually identical. Um, that, that's another thing it would be nice if we could reuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyways, now we'll make our mutations. So we'll cr do a create note, which the input will be create note input. And this will give us a note. So whatever note we create, it will just go ahead and return it and then a delete note, which will take in an ID. Whoops. Uh, I always do that. And it'll give us back a string. Th that is a string in the case that the note actually existed. If it doesn't, then it'll be null, which is why we're not adding the, the, the non-null there. So yeah, there's our schema. I think the, the the next thing that we might want to go ahead and, and actually install is the the, the code generator that's going to get us TypeScript types from this GraphQL schema because we want our our implementation to be type safe. So we'll go ahead and install as a dev dependency GraphQL code gen slash CLI and GraphQL code gen slash TypeScript. So someone had a question, why is the title Concise Constructs? Well, um, we are we are now building a regular CDK you know, project, but what Harry's going to be doing is refactoring using a library that he created called Concise Constructs that allows you to build CDK projects with a little bit less code. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that uh, right after we implement the, the GraphQL API. I think it's... Like I'm really excited to to show the difference. It's definitely an API design difference. It's more about your style, like the, the way that you enjoy writing the code 
Um, but I, I think it's probably important to show the raw CDK counterpart. Uh, just for those of you who um, you know, haven't really used the CDK before, or just kind of getting up and running, I think uh, it's good to, to kind of know both approaches. Because when you're writing a CDK app, you are going to be seeing a lot of documentation that you know, has constructs defined in the, the existing, what, what I call the classical manner. So we've gone ahead and defined this schema.gql. Now let's go ahead and create our codegen.yml. So this is specific to GraphQL code generator. You have to tell it what it generates. And within here, we're gonna say, we wanna generate to GraphQL API slash generated types.ts. That, that's what we would like to, to do. Next, we'll specify the schema, which is gonna come from GraphQL API slash schema.gql. We're gonna say overwrite is true. So this is going to be if we've already generated it uh, and then we trigger the generation again, we want it to just you know, erase whatever we previously generated and write the new stuff. And then we're gonna add this plugin which we also already installed, just the, whoops, the TypeScript plugin, which I suppose has all those options. That's pretty nice. Um, but we're, we're not gonna change any of those options. And for config, say use index signature is true. This helps us avoid some, uh, some kind of wonky errors down the line. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and just, just run um, MPX and actually, I don't remember exactly what this, uh, this command is. I think it's just GraphQL code gen. We'll run that and surely enough, it generates this for us, generated types. We'll take a quick look at what it is and you can see that everything we defined in our schema is now represented in TypeScript. Dude, that's I did not know you could do that that easily. So basically, it just introspects your schema and gives you types that you can use in your um, in your JavaScript app or TypeScript app. Oh yeah, <laughs> pretty nifty, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and and so that that's exactly what we should do now. Now we should go ahead and define our uh, our handlers or our resolvers. So inside of GraphQL API slash Lambda, this empty index. Now, what are we gonna want inside of here? Well, we have to define four resolvers. Um, the first one is going to be create note. So inside of create note, what do we wanna do? Well, the first thing that we wanna do is import the types for this handler from AWS Lambda. And it's pretty great, this uh, types slash AWS Lambda package gives us out of the box an app sync resolver type or, or for the handler. Okay, so I learned resolver. something else new today. <laughs> it's, it's nice, it's uh, not bad at all. And, and then we'll import star as T from generated type. Uh oh, I called it generated type. I should have called it generated types. Someone um, actually made that comment and um, in the chat. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> got to do it. Got to got to get the naming right. It's it's too important. All right, so now we have generated types. Good. Uh, shout out to that person who commented that. Very good. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and export const handler, and we'll set this to an app sync resolver handler. And this is generic. So inside of here, we can actually pass the mutation arguments. So t dot mutation create note arcs, which were generated for us. So the input. And we can also specify what it's going to give us. So it's going to give us a note. And then it's going to be asynchronous. And have the event kind of 
Now you, you can see it's giving us an error. Why is it giving us an error? Well, because we, we didn't return what we were meant to. We needed to return the item that we're creating. So it just yells at you until you're completely finished writing your code, huh? Exactly. It's impossible to make mistakes. That that's really the beauty of new TypeScript tools. The type system is so advanced that library developers are able to encode constraints that help safeguard against any kind of library misuse. It's becoming increasingly impossible to misuse tools. And I think that's a trend we're going to continue to see. And especially in the domain of AWS, where there are all of these pieces of infrastructure that need to lock into one another in pretty complex ways. And where the cost of deploying something that's going to fail at runtime is higher than if you were just running it locally. Um, yeah, it's, it's getting pretty insane. So the next thing that we're going to want to do, because we're going to be using DynamoDB, let's go ahead and install the AWS SDK. Or, uh, yeah, SDK, I got it right. <laughs> Look at that. Lately, whenever I try to say AWS SDK, I end up saying AWS CDK. Someone actually asked the question that's similar to this. So I figured I'd throw it out here real quick. I, as a new user to AWS, I'm not really understanding the difference between CDK and Amplify SDK. Yeah. So Amplify is a tool geared towards front-end developers. So the particular piece of infrastructure that you need for a website um, or for web application or, or for a mobile application, CDK covers the entire surface area of AWS. So it's pretty agnostic of platform. It's just uh, like all of these building blocks. A Amplify is catering more more so to a set of use cases. Um, and the SDK is an, another tool for interacting with these services. But the, the difference is CDK is more about the control plane, so how you configure the services. The SDK is more about how you actually utilize them. Um, so right now we're about to use DynamoDB. Um, the CDK would is what we're going to use to configure a DynamoDB table and to enable for this resolver to have permission to access that table. Whereas the SDK is what's actually going to be accessing that table. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, I think I think that's a good answer to the question. And then someone else actually chimed in. Um, Sean, Amplify is a CLI that you can use to set up AWS resources that have been specifically picked for front-end devs. CDK is more of an in infrastructure as code tool from AWS that lets you spin up any AWS resource, but you have to learn the CDK package instead of following CDK prompts, which is a pretty good uh, overview as well. So yeah, you can keep going. Cool. So let's go ahead and create a file common. And inside of this common file, let's go ahead and import from AWS SD uh, uh -oh, SDK. We're going to import DynamoDB because that's the client that we want. We'll export this client. Export const db equals new. DynamoDB, and we're going to use a document client. And another thing that we're going to do, and we're going to do this from, um, from the infrastructure, is we're going to depend on there being an environment variable present in this Lambda. So we'll specify this later. But for now, we'll just say const table name is going to be equal to process.env.table name. And this is going to show us a string or undefined. It's not great practice, but we'll just go ahead and assert that it has to be defined. Um, and it will be, be defined. We're, we're going to specify this. So yeah. <clears throat> Next thing, we're going to go ahead and import that from within our create node. So we want to use that same client that we're going to use from all of our resolvers. We're also going to be using table name, so DB and table name, both of those. And within here, we're going to want to await db.put 
this is going to take in table name and it's also going to take in the item now where do we get the item from well it's inside of event event dot and you see arguments dot and then let's do that again in and in is a create note input so if, if we take a look at the properties on this we have everything that we defined in our graphql schema accessible at the type right. level here so uh you know i'm not usually a huge fan of destructuring but <laughs> let's uh let's go ahead and do this let's say arguments in and we'll rename this as item and then we'll go ahead and just pass this directly in here that's pretty thank you let's see oh wait and now something else that we got to do is we have to say hey we want this as a promise so that's really important after that uh, we can just go ahead and return item you know that that's what this is expecting here we've told it we're going to give it a note and the item that we're going to give it we don't have to then go ahead and like refetch it from the db like we placed this item inside the db now we'll just go ahead and return it and you see before i returned it it was giving me an error if I try to return something unexpected, it's going to give me an error. Doing it this way lets me be certain that I'm implementing it in accordance with the schema that I defined in GraphQL. So yeah, now let's create our delete note.ts. And we'll go ahead and copy over all this stuff just so we don't have to rewrite all of it. Um, like all these imports are going to be the same. Uh, the difference is here, instead of mutation create notes, arg, args, it's going to be uh, mutation delete notes, arg. Uh, I'm saying it all wrong. <laughs> and right here, what we want to do is t dot mutation delete note. So this is just going to be a string if I'm not mistaken. Okay, string or null or undefined. Because if the note that we're trying to delete doesn't exist, then it's going to be null or undefined. And now we're getting some different items here. So we're no longer going to get that from args. What, what args do we have accessible? We have an ID. Great. So we access this ID. Um, and you say, what do we want to do now? We're no longer putting an item. We want to delete an item. Keep the table name there. And how do we want to delete it? We want to delete it based on the key. There's going to be ID. So where the ID aligns with what we're providing here. And the next thing we want to do is, because this is expecting for us to return um, the ID, we do want to return it. However, we have to safeguard against something happening. Here. So if the item that we're trying to delete doesn't exist, we're going to get a promise rejection. So we actually have to wrap this in a try catch. And if it does catch, then it, it means that you know, it didn't exist, so we're going to want to return undefined. And surely enough, the type errors disappear. So now we have this type safe implementation. Mm. I need to up my TypeScript game. <laughs> uh, reach out anytime. I love this stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's really useful, like really useful. I, I, I can't imagine that there was a time where we were writing just JavaScript. Um, and now with all of these, like, I'm really excited to see what happens with Dino, the mm -hmm. idea of a, a first class TypeScript runtime. So also, next, no next, NPM install. Uh, what? I said, also, no NPM install. To the best of my knowledge, you can just import whatever you want. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know what these meanings. I'm, th these didn't exist before, the <laughs> before this. Um, I'm not skipping out on things. <laughs> I want to say that first and foremost. Uh, so now note. 
uh, we can copy over a lot of the same boilerplate from here. And is this a DOM operation? Um, yeah, we're going to be using get for note. Okay, got it. Um, and inside of here, this isn't going to take in, or actually, it will. It's going to take in. Uh, what am I doing? Query note args, and it's going to give us a, a note. So within arguments, uh, we can do the same things before. We'll destructure the ID. And then here, I'm going to want to do, actually, I'm going to want a try catch again. And for try, we'll say const item is the item we want equals await db.get. It's going to take in the table name, and it's going to take in it as the key, the ID. And then as before, we need this as a promise. So we got this. We're going to want to return item, but you see we get this error. So some of the type information is lost when we actually use the DynamoDB client. So uh, what, what we're going to have to do here is we're just going to have to cast or assert that it's, it's a note. And then if we get into this catch block, then we're going to return undefined because the note doesn't exist. We're trying to get it, and it's throwing an error. So it doesn't exist. Um, and yeah, with that, I, I think we have one more handler to make, which is our notes handler. And within our notes handler, um, we're, we're not going to accept any arguments. You know, usually, you would probably want to accept some kind of pagination. Um, and, but we're not going to. And this is going to be notes, so it's returning a list of them. And same thing here. Instead, of, we're, we're not accepting any arguments, so we'll get rid of this. In fact, I don't think we need the event at all. Um, mm -hmm. And it's going to be items. It's going to be db.scan. And I think that's pretty much it, actually. Oh, except for if we catch here, we still want to return a list. It's just an empty list. So now we can, can go ahead and define our infrastructure for this. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can clean this up a bit. So go to index. <clears throat> now we're we're gonna want to build. Oh, la actually, last thing we want to do is export from create note and delete note and note and notes, and we're gonna want to. So let's see, handler as note handler, handler as notes handler, handler as create note handler, and handler as uh, delete note handler. <clears throat> So now when we bundle this, we're going to have... I think uh, that delete and notes need to be switched. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> it, you are absolutely right. I was doing this mindlessly. Um, notes handler. What, what am I thinking? Create no, note handler. Note handler. Too many handlers. Notes. Yeah, there are a lot of them. One strategy would be you could actually just, you know, instead of calling every single one handler, you can define it in the file, and then you, you could just say import star from, you know, whatever, and it would, it would keep the name. I don't know why this is preferable, actually. It might not be. Um, but it'll do the job for now. Mm -hmm. So next thing we're going to want to do is uh, define our infrastructure. So the same thing as before, we're going to want to go ahead and import 
star CDK from AWS CDK slash core. We're going to want to import star as DDB from AWS uh, CDK slash AWS Dynamo. Oh, wait, we got to install this. Okay. NPM I AWS CDK slash AWS Dynamo DB and AWS CDK slash AWS. Uh, what are we missing? App Sync. Yeah, I think that's all that we have left to install. DynamoDB, now it's there. Uh, and we are gonna be using Lambda again. So Lambda from AWS CDK slash AWS Lambda. Um, what else are we gonna be using? Right, AppSync, star is AppSync from AppSync and maybe import path from path because we know we're gonna be using this to reference the code. So export class Graph, GraphQL API stack extends cdk.stack. We define our constructor, scope cdk.app, ID string, and then we pass it into super scope and ID. Uh, next thing that we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and define the API. So new app sync, ugh, it is new app sync dot GraphQL API. Within here, we're gonna provide scope. We're gonna provide GraphQL API as the ID. And we have to give it a name. So we'll just say GraphQL API because we're, we're being creative. <laughs> For schema, we'll go ahead and pass in app sync dot schema dot from asset. With here, we can reference path dot resolve. We want the current directory that we're in, you see it as schema right there. So we want to resolve schema.gql. Then we also might as well go ahead and enable x-ray, get some nice tracing. Um, when we build this, we are going to want to print out potentially some fields contained on here, like the API key or the URL. So to do that, we can say new uh, cdk.cfn output, pass in what the output is, so GraphQL URL, let's say, for the endpoint itself. We'll give it a name, export name, okay, GraphQL URL. We'll give it a value. This will be API dot uh, GraphQL URL. So now when we actually execute this, and it's deployed, we're gonna get that URL printed out in our console. Okay, next we'll go ahead and define the table that we wanna use, the DynamoDB table. So const db equals new DDB dot table. It's gonna take in scope, it's gonna take in an ID, which is a DB. We have to pass billing mode. Let's, uh, let's do billing mode dot pay per request and a partition key. For this, the name is going to be ID, and the type is going to be DDB dot attribute type dot string. Now we gotta add our resolvers. So same thing as before. We're going to go ahead and build this into a directory called Lambda Dist, um, and we have four of them to make. So to make our lives easier, so that we don't actually. Uh, you know, instantiate um, so that we don't have to write as much code. Let's let's kind of describe what we're, what we're doing here. Uh, we'll, we'll create this array, say type name is gonna be query for one of them. The field name on query is going to be note. And what access does note need? It needs dynamo db get item. So that's one of our resolvers right there. We have another query resolver. So type name, query, uh, whoops, field name is notes, access. It's gonna, what does notes need? It needs scan. So DynamoDB scan, type name. Now we wanna make our mutations. So mutation, let's say field name. It's going to be equal to create note. 
and access is going to be equal to dynamo dynamo db put item and now our final resolver which is also a mutation field name is delete note and the access is going to be dynamo db delete item so these are the resolvers that we want to instantiate let's go ahead and iterate through them so for each and within here we'll go ahead and access uh, we, we want access and then the rest as props um, we're going to go ahead and what is the id of this resolver the id is going to be props dot it's going to be the field name and then we'll say handler so we'll just post fix it whoops now cost handler it's going to be a lambda function it's going to take in the scope it's going to take in the id that we've defined right here this is one of the coolest things about cdk the fact that you can write logic and you can work with data structures like arrays to create your infrastructure totally i couldn't agree more um it's pretty wild like it's it's like a programming language for the cloud mm -hmm. um you know, as opposed to before where you were just writing static cloud formation so this is going to take in for code new lambda dot asset code I'm going to pass in path dot resolve and like i said we're going to resolve this lambda dist, just like before. Um, for environment now, this is an, a new thing that we're introducing that we didn't in the previous one. We need table name. Um, and table name is going to come from our table. So right up here where we, we define DB, we can just go ahead and access table name directly on it and pass it in as an environment variable within this lambda. That's another thing about the CDK, which is great. You get to establish the relationship between constructs in really a first class way, as if it's in memory, even though these are, uh, th there's, there's a certain complexity to the staging of this infrastructure that, um, that, that really this, this just abstracts it away for you. So here we go. Next for, for handler, it's gonna be index dot, and then the ID. So the same ID that we described here, something that you'll notice, it's actually exactly what we're exporting them as. So we'll say handler is index dot, and then we interpolate the ID. And that's gonna give us the correct export. Last but not least, we'll give it the runtime. Same as before, node 12. And so this is our resolver. We'll go ahead and say db.grant because we want to give permission from this database for the handler to access it. So we grant it to the handler and then we spread whatever the permissions that we want, which we destructured from here after defining it here and here and so on. Got it. So you're not doing full access, you're just kind of giving access based on the operation that, that's going to happen. Exactly. We're scoping it down to the bare minimum. Uh, none of these resolvers should be able to, act, to to do more operations on our table than the bare minimum. Um, and last but not least, we'll call api.add lambda data source. You have to give it an ID. So for this, we'll say props.field name and then data source. We say, okay, the handler. And last but not least, we'll call create resolver on the result of that. And the props that this accepts, you see, it's, uh oh, what am I doing? It's props that we've already defined. Let's just go ahead and pass in props. And bam, we're good to go. Um, last thing that we need to do before we can deploy this is to actually build the Lambda code. So we'll go up here to where we were executing the build for the previous um, 
code and, and you see the only thing that's going to change is this section right here. So we'll say REST API and GraphQL API dot for each is going to be um, Lambda Dir. And we'll take this code, move it in, is going to just go ahead and replace that. And so now, if we go ahead and execute uh, npx cdk deploy, well, actually, uh, we're, we're not going to get any changes since we haven't yet instantiated the stack that we just defined. But we might as well just do it just so that we can see that the that the Lambda code is, is there. Yep, surely enough, Lambda dist. Now, if we open it, see everything bundled in, in a single file. And another thing we notice is even though we're importing the AWS SDK, we've specified it as external. So we're not bloating this. Now that nice. we've done, now that we've done that, uh, we're going to go ahead and import from GraphQL API within here. Uh, GraphQL API stack. And so we'll go ahead and instantiate that too. Prefix it, ID prefix, screencasting dash, API stack. So whenever you in, uh, instantiate a new stack, that uh, when you run CDK deploy, it actually is going to go ahead and build that out and then deploy it? Uh, yes, exactly. So we, we don't have to run any other commands. We're just mm -hmm. saying, hey, let's delegate the building of our Lambda code to the same process that we're using to synthesize our cloud formation from CDK. Cool. Um, and now we can go ahead and run another deploy. npm run, or actually same thing as before. npx CDK deploy dash dash app ts node. So let's do that. Uh oh, right. One thing you got to do if you have multiple stacks is you have to specify all. So this will probably take like three minutes or so. Uh, okay. That was cool. That was cool. Really in, um, enjoying watching your coding and kind of the way you set things up and stuff like that. I'm really looking forward to playing around with this code also when we're done. Thank you. Like yeah, mainly um, around your configuration and stuff with TypeScript and stuff. Oh yeah, the configuration is everything. I, I think I'm I'm a little too fixated on configuration actually, like uh, <laughs> in search of the exact workspace. It's like as as minimal as possible. It's, uh, it takes a lot. I, I feel like so many of the tools that we're used to working with are just huge rabbit holes. Like. Um, yeah, I mean, you wrote also a really good blog post on TypeScript a few months ago, maybe, or a few weeks ago. So if anyone is interested in that, um, maybe I'll go ahead and share that in the in the chat. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and if, if anyone has, has questions about any of this stuff, feel free to message me um, anytime or, or, or tweet at me or something. Um, and more than happy to, to answer whether it's regarding this or other questions. Uh, so we see it's th the first thing that it does is it creates this cloud formation stack. So it synthesizes um, our entire project into see these, these templates. So each stack is a different template.json. And this is just raw cloud formation here. So this is kind of like the assembly language of AWS. It also goes ahead and gathers all of the resources that we're pointing to um, and then deploys it for us using CloudFormation. Pretty great. So we're almost there, I think. Where are we? Yeah. And also notice, uh, like a lot of times in some of the videos that I do, 
in some of the uh, projects that I've worked on, I kind of map every single GraphQL operation into a single Lambda function. And then in the event, I kind of will, um, you know, get the GraphQL field name, uh, I guess, or is it, yeah, the field name. Um, and then I would basically determine whether to invoke a function within that Lambda function. Whereas with this project, you're kind of creating a separate, completely separate Lambda function for each individual, you know, um, right. op op operation or GraphQL mutation or query. Yeah, I, I saw the way you were doing that. That was really interesting. Um, so the, the reason I split it apart is because we want to we want to set different permissions for each of those. Um, at the same time, what, what you're doing makes a, a lot of sense too. Yeah, I think it just depends. You, you I mean, the trade offs, you know, with each with each approach. I think that um, with um, fine grained controls around permissions and stuff, and also around things like uh, monitoring and um, things like, yeah, monitoring the um, uh, logging and all that stuff. It's a, it's a better approach to do what you to, to do what you've done. But uh, the reason I like also sometimes mapping them all into a single Lambda is uh, for the ability to kind of um, the cold starts and stuff. So you're, if you're hitting the same function over and over and over, you, you have to worry less about cold starts, but also maybe oh, right. um, things like, just less code to deal with, I guess. Like, but but when you're working with infrastructure's code, you're not really seeing a lot of this infrastructure code, right? It's just like, like what you're doing, you're just abstracting it away with CDK anyway. So, um, I like both approaches. I would say, you know, I I think I see like the people within AWS that are like at the the top of the food chain on thought leadership type of people, but also a lot of the companies using. Lambda in production kind of go the route that you went as well, though. But I also have customers that go the the other way, so I, mm. it just depends. Yeah, I think uh, both get the job done. The important thing is that you're only uploading the code to S3 once. Like, if if you were uploading the same code many times, that would be an issue. Um, but I, I don't know that creating individual lambdas is. The most costly, especially since people are just paying for the executions. Um, right. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. It's about the same as as far as pricing is concerned. Yeah. Um, really someone mentioned so, uh, or asked the question: Will the code be available in a repo? Yes, we're going to go ahead and share yep. all of that, and um, and and all of the the code for any of the projects that we've talked about as well. So we see we have our, our endpoint here for our GraphQL API. Went ahead and printed it out. Uh, that's because we showed this before, but uh, we went ahead and said, let's go ahead and print this out. <laughs> so next, let's take a look at our API. Uh, hang on a moment. I go to go to um, app sync and we see we have an API here so let's click into it and let's run a query and right now if we were to run like a notes query we would get an empty array. Yep. That's good. So right now we don't have any notes, so nothing would come back. Let's uh, uh, see if we can I'm really bad in this editor. Fair warning, clicking around. Is, <laughs> uh, okay, let's create a note. So inside of here, specify an ID of, let's say, hello. And Name is going to, or what do we need? Yeah, we need commas. Name is going to be first note. And then completed, we'll set to true. And then, whoops, what do we want out of it? Let's, let's go ahead and, and just get the name. And let's execute this. And surely enough, we get the name. Now, if we were to get out of this mutation and go back to query, we want to get a particular note. Uh, uh oh, do you remember what I <laughs> what I did it as? You know, let, let's hello? do notes instead. 
was hello. Ah, whatever, we can say notes, name. We query them and surely enough, name is first uh, first note. There, well, the ID was hello. Let's see, let's get the ID too, just to be sure. Yep, hello. Now the ID here is gonna be, let's see whether it's completed. Completed is true, okay. And last but not least, uh, let's go ahead and delete it. So we'll do another mutation, uh, explore, mutation, and delete the ID. It's going to be hello. And this should give us uh, just the ID back. And now, if we were to go back to query and do notes again, we get nothing. So there it is. We just built and deployed a GraphQL API. Pretty insane. Uh, last but not least, let's do some refactoring. <laughs> Let's uh, see how concise constructs or concise constructs come into play. Oh yeah, so MPMI concise constructs. We're going to import from concise constructs C. So we have this C right here. What we want to do is instead of exporting class GraphQL API stack. We're going to say export const GraphQL API stack equals. We're going to add C. Wrap it around here. I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff, and it, it exposes def or define or whatever you want to call it. Now let's go down here and get rid of some of this. And now we're not gonna be working with this. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define, what do we wanna define? We wanna give it the name. And then we wrap it there. So it's just slightly less code than before. So you went from, uh, and it, it might be better to, to put this side to side. I'm gonna think of it, you know what? Yeah, let, let's go ahead and do this side to side. We'll create a new file. Uh -oh. Index new dot ts. We want all the same stuff. And we want to close it out. Okay, <clears throat> so now we want this output here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of some of this and define the output. Now a DynamoDB table. I'm gonna say, get rid of this, I'm gonna copy this name, Get rid of the new, define. And when you call it define, are you passing in, is that string an ID or is that the name of the resource? It's the ID. So uh, same as before. The way to think about this is if you were to define something in memory, like const my map equals new map, and then you, you provide some entries. Um, we have define keyword, we have the name of the resource, we have the type of the resource, and then we have the properties that are being used to instantiate it. Cool. So, yeah. Next, all this same good stuff, we'll, we'll copy this over. Only down here,
we're going to use define passing ID. So let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at, at the code. Uh, you know, it's it's very subtle from this uh, standpoint. Maybe we'll take a look at the, the REST API, but um, you do end up writing a little bit less code. So, but it's kind of no more concept around of scope. The scope. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to hear more and understand more about the the trade offs that are, are made with that, or maybe the um, you know the things that the positive things that come out of not having to worry about scope. Yeah, well, it's just a concept that I, I feel like is uh, is difficult for people just getting familiar. It's also kind of a for front end developers who are used to kind of like React code, right? Think, think yeah, I was going to say this has some similar, you know, concepts as as how React re re um, you know wrote the framework to start uh, enabling hooks, which um, made it so that you did not have to understand scope or where you were within the function to to you know refer to variables and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that, that's definitely a, a big piece of it. It's just sensibilities, like front-end developers, like functional code. Now, the CDK isn't pure in, in that way. Um, like it has some mutation happening under the hood. You have these constructs folding onto themselves. Um, but we can give a functional feeling experience. Um, so it's, it's kind of what this is going for. Um, it's about API design sensibilities. But it's also about getting rid of the cognitive overhead of scope. And when you define a construct, uh, you're not having to you know, specify that it's going to accept an ID. Meanwhile, if we were to go and instantiate this, um, it, it does know that it, it's meant to take in a scope and an ID. So we, we get all of that implicitly. Um, that's kind of the thinking. Now, let's take a look at the REST API example. So what, what would this look like? Index new.ts. And export const rest API stack equals, and once again, we'll import C from concise constructs. Is going to be c cdk.stack. And it takes in this function that exposes define. So here we define our handler, which just like before is a lambda dot function. And it takes in all of those same properties. And then we define REST API. It's going to be API gateway dot lambda rest API. It's going to take in handler. Uh, whoops, we got to capture this in a variable. And so, yeah, it's it's kind of a subtle difference, but it's there. Like we're we're not having to think about certain things that we previously did need to think about as a result of wanting to package this for availability to other mm -hmm. runtimes. Um, so it's it's more of a TypeScript first experience. And full disclaimer, I don't know if this is the desired end state. Mm -hmm. um, what I think really going for is to, to figure out what experiences do people prefer? Um, there are a lot of different ways we could abstract over the CDK. This is one of a million. Uh, so yeah, ho hopefully some people can weigh in on whether they like the look of this or whether they would treat this a little bit differently if they were creating their own library to layer over it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, there it is. That's awesome. That's that's super interesting. Um, I'm kind of curious. So, uh, are you going to be doing anything different with the library in the next uh, few weeks or months? Like, what are the plans? And I, I see that this is open sourced within the AWS samples or AWS uh, organization. Are there other collaborators as well? Um. The, there are people that I run it by who have a lot of good feedback. Uh, and and who've given code reviews and i want collaborators like please if you're interested uh 
I w- would love to, to work with you on it. Um, yeah, so what, what are the plans for this? Well, for, for one, start to get some feedback, see if this is the desired experience. Um, it hasn't hit a major release, so the API could still change. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome any feedback. Also, thank you so much for having me on so that I could show this to people and um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate your you taking the time to put this together. I mean, uh, the demo was very well done. You pretty much nailed it without much you know issues, which is pretty great considering how much code you had to write. Um, for anyone that's interested, uh, you're going to share the link for the GitHub repo, right? And we can put that totally. in, the, in the notes. Yep. Okay, so we'll have the link to the GitHub repo in the comments. Um, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's just my full name, Harry Solovey. Okay, so let me go ahead and share that on the chat. So it should go ahead and um, pop up here. So this is Harry's Twitter. So if you're interested in uh, learning more or asking him any questions, give him a follow, reach out to him. I'm sure he'd be happy to help out. And uh, can you kind of real quick, we're we're about to wrap it up, but can you go over quickly like what you're working on now at AWS? Because I thought that was pretty interesting as well. Yeah, for sure. There's this uh, new service from Alexa, or it's Alexa Conversations. So it's going to enable people to model conversations with Alexa um, in in kind of a way that's more back and forth, kind of how you would speak to a person. And creating the experience around it is uh, is pretty interesting. I'm not so sure how deep I should go right now. Right, right. Yeah, you probably can't get a lot trouble. of details, but I mean, the fact that you're working on some new stuff with Alexa. I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting, you know, pretty cool. It's been fun. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll be excited to share that with you. Uh, awesome. Well, um, yeah, thanks for your time. We'll go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks again for coming on. Um, we will share the code in the comments and uh, we'll see you next time, I guess. Thanks for everyone that, uh, that watched this. Later. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Bye.